next speaker. Join us for an insightful session on innovations in lead and battery technology with Dr. Sundar Mayawan, Principal Scientist at Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and Central Electrochemical Research Institute, where he leads cutting edge research in lead acid battery technologies and heads the National Accreditation Board for Testing and Calibration Laboratory Accredited Battery Testing Center. Dr. Maiwan with a doctorate from University of South Australia and over 15 years of experience has con contributed significantly to the battery industry. He has authored 25 plus research papers, holds a patent and is an active member of Bureau of India Standards Technical Committees on Battery Standards. His areas of expertise include use of nanocarbons in lead and acid batteries, e-rickshaws and stock battery systems, battery pack testing and battery management systems. ISO 17025 is to 2017 laboratory systems. Uh, over to you, Mr. Sundar. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Matt. Uh, yes, Mr. Sundar. Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to share my screen. Is that visible? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, good morning. Uh, sorry, good afternoon, everyone. Right. Uh, myself, Sundar Mayan from Sikri Kalikri. And uh, uh, today, my topic will be on innovation in lead acid battery technology. So today I will take you through the uh, fascinating journey of lead acid battery uh, <laughs> technology that has been with us for That's more than it's more than 170 years, and uh, we will see how it began in automobiles, and then uh, move to telecom and data centers, and how it re-entered uh, into automotive world uh, as a new avatar. So. Most importantly, uh, I'll be discussing about uh, the last two decades uh, that can be rightfully called as an carbon era of lead acid battery. So this is the outline of my presentation uh, uh, where I'll be introducing about my institute and uh, a complete journey about uh, lead acid battery, recent development and uh, wrap it up with the conclusion. So this is a lab uh, which I belong to. Uh, CECRI, Central Electrochemical Research Institute. Uh, it's a, a premier uh, R&D lab working in the field of electrochemistry. And uh, I belong uh, to energy storage uh, group uh, called CSR BP Tech. So this is the state of the art uh, battery test facility uh, where uh, we can uh, uh, test uh, batteries for variety of applications. Lines are not moving. Slides is not coming. Hello, Mr. Sundar. Can you please move your slides? The slides are not moving. Uh, uh, for me. Uh... Hello, Mr. Sundar. Can you please move the slides? Click the slide. Yeah, I just... yeah I'm just moving it. So Thank is you. It... Thank you. Yeah. So can you now see, ma'am? Yeah. 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 Uh, so like uh, our battery center is... Uh, and enabled... you can increase your volume. Uh, battery center is enable accredited uh, for a variety of uh, application uh, you can mm -hmm. uh, ranging from solar batteries e-rickshaw batteries and uh, inverter uh, batteries and uh, this center is also recognized by bas uh, mnre and rdso especially for uh, uh, testing a solar battery and uh, batteries for railway application and uh, these are our uh, major uh, select customers with whom uh, we have been uh, working uh, towards development of a lead acid battery. So let's come to uh, uh, today's uh, topic. Uh, so uh, this is a uh, snapshot of what I'll be talking today, like uh, uh, eras of lead acid battery technology. So we'll just uh, go through briefly uh, about uh, this in a few slides. So first is, the, uh, as you can say, see that the story starts in the mid 19th century, around 1850, when the lead acid battery was first invented. Okay, so This was the first rechargeable battery in history, uh, major scientific uh, breakthrough. 
but uh, soon it found uh, application uh, in automotive uh, especially for uh, starting engines uh, this system is very simple uh, but robust uh, and uh, if you can see that like a lead acid battery uh, become a dominant force uh, especially for automotive industry so after that uh, emergence of uh, valve regulated lead acid battery so the next uh, big thing in uh, lead acid battery so uh, these batteries are sealed and maintenance free and uh, safer compared to flooded design so they are extremely popular uh, and you can see that uh, from 1918 till 2000 and uh, in india there was a, a manufacturing boom and there's also uh, data telecom boom also required reliable uh, backup power sources and uh, we also uh, seen a large um, increase in it infrastructure that also needed uninterrupted power supply and for uh, industrial emergency backup so during this decade uh, where vrlf batteries were the most soft after technology uh, not just in india but uh, globally and uh, it continues to rule the market so while uh, globally it is uh, attracting um, vrlf system is attracting back in india uh, uh, in 2010 there is a special sector emerged that is uh, only specific to india that is called inverter battery uh, the sector and uh, this was uh, been fueled by rapid growth uh, due to urbanization and uh, rising electricity needs so uh, you can see that all major players like exide uh, livgard luminous and amaraja they they also entered this space but uh, uh, this space uh, gave uh, msme battery manufacturers uh, uh, a great um, Uh, business for them and so they entered the market and uh, kept the price uh, competitive so you don't have this sector anywhere else in, in the world but uh, we have a very uh, good sector uh, especially for home inverters uh, so while uh, things were going uh, uh, there but uh, but around uh, uh, 2000 you can see that uh, government especially in europe uh introduced the stricter uh, emission regulation and the uh, cafe norms that is uh, nothing but corporate average fuel economy standards so automakers uh, there they had uh, no other option than to improve the fuel efficiency so this led to the development of uh, start stop vehicles where the engine automatically switches off at a traffic lights or during idling and uh, restarts when the driver accelerates so when the vehicle stops the battery has to support the load such as uh, during stoppage you'll be using our aircon or uh, listening to the songs lights or gps anyway so whenever you hit a traffic signal the battery takes control and whenever you want to start the car meaning that your battery turns to green uh, the signal traffic signal turns to green that energy is also taken from the battery so by using this system uh, you could able to save around 8 to 10 percentage compared to conventional vehicles so but uh, this uh, heavy duty okay uh, repeated uh, conventional lead acid battery could not handle because uh, in a conventional lead acid battery uh, the role is just to crank the car but here the battery has to uh undergo frequent uh, discharge you can see while the while the traffic signal is red the vehicle uh stops the engine stops and the battery is getting discharged and uh, the vehicle also for starting also the battery is again getting discharged and while driving phase the battery is getting charged so meaning that the battery is uh, undergoing frequent charge and discharge especially under a uh, partial state of cycling condition so this means that battery uh, the standard lead acid battery will fail prematurely and uh, usually it uh, needs early replacement so now this is where the second avatar we call as like uh, for lead acid battery came in the in the name of enhanced flooded lead acid battery conference we will go on for another hour or uh, efp so efbs were specifically designed for start stop vehicles so uh, let's see what made them different
asking so this uh, micro hybrid the battery which used in micro hybrid should have both durability and uh, good charge acceptance so in this area like uh, carbon uh, the key innovation was the introduction of carbon additives into the negative plates uh, that was being seen as a game changer especially for micro hybrid vehicles and uh, carbon brought three big improvements you can see that it uh, improved the charge acceptance so the battery could absorb charge faster during short driving intervals and uh, it reduced uh, the sulfation to a larger extent and also improved the cycle life and at sikri we have been working uh, in the field of nano carbon for lead acid batteries since 2010 and we have ourselves seen that uh, by incorporating um, carbon nanotubes you could uh, significantly improve the charge acceptance of lead acid battery that will help in um, uh, better batteries for micro hybrid vehicles so you can clearly see that uh, so nearly after five decades of uh, focusing on backup power application for telecom data centers lead acid battery made a strong comeback into the cars and this time in the new form called as a enhanced flooded lead acid battery so and this is what we call the carbon era of lead acid battery and uh, for the last two decades carbon is playing a defining role in keeping lead acid battery technology highly relevant uh, so simply we are just add adding carbon black by modifying uh, the negative plate with advanced carbon could uh, able to improve the performance and it's not only carbon black but uh, other important things that needs to be taken care is on the grid uh, alloy and also uh, positive active metal utilization for cycling duty and separator and manufacturing process so all these combined together uh, and uh, will make a battery that is uh, more relevant uh, for the micro hybrid application and uh, if you uh, think about uh, uh, the future so a future is like uh, emerging uh, innovation so uh, till now we have seen about uh, the emergence of uh, uh, sealed battery that is well regulated lead acid battery and uh, last uh, 15 to 20 years uh, the whole world uh, is uh, moving towards uh, enhanced flooded lead acid battery and uh, the another promising development uh, is the bipolar lead acid battery uh, the advantage is its design so it is very uh, a new design so it involves a very thin lead base plate that uh, that itself acts both as a positive plate and also negative plate uh, much like a uh, stack like a sandwich so so you have a, a, a reduced weight and you have low resistance and uh, and improves the uh, high energy density so but but the sad thing is like uh, the companies have been working in this technology for more than 20 years but uh, uh, yeah, it is very uh, but still there are uh, many issues that needs to be addressed for this technology to become highly relevant with uh, lithium battery prices uh, coming down and this technology will be fitting between the uh, enhanced flooded lead acid battery and the lithium ion battery so with uh, lithium battery prices falling this technology uh, not very sure about uh, uh, the cost effectiveness of this technology but this is the next big thing Uh, if something needs to happen for lead acid battery, this is the next big thing happening in lead acid battery space. So, just to conclude, like uh, the lead acid battery has been uh, adapted over one seventy years, and uh, carbon keeps it uh, very competitive, like uh, with uh, other new chemistries, and uh, can with uh, new regulation and fuel efficiency need. Um, the start of vehicle push the battery back into cars into a second avatar and then that is the emergence of uh, enhanced flooded lead acid battery from 2000 to till date uh, we can call as an carbon era in for lead acid battery those who work in lead acid battery space uh, will appreciate this one for last 20 years we are also into carbon materials and uh, initially it started for cars but uh, 
now it has been expanded uh, for uh, uh, renewal uh, application for a solar pv application and for telecom application also these carbon materials have been used for uh, improving the charge acceptance of the lead acid battery and to prevent uh, sulfation and uh, the emerging future is bipolar lead acid battery again uh, I, i want to say it with caution that uh, uh, people have been trying a lot but uh, uh, the cost is a major factor that uh, will affect the popularity of the uh, bipolar lead acid battery it's a very good technology but a uh, lot of things need to be fixed so this advancement actually uh, by adding carbon to the conventional lead acid battery uh, will try to bridge the gap between the lead acid battery and more advanced chemistry like lithium uh, while simultaneously keeping cost low and uh, leveraging existing manufacturing infrastructure so that's it uh, from my side thanks for the opportunity Thank you.